What's up, folks, and happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to the Modern Truths Throwback Thursday. Throwback Thursdays are when myself, MJ, and she, Alex Storm, talk about old school movies. So, Alex, what are we talking about today? So this week, in the spirit of Thanksgiving and with the movie Creed coming out, we decided to watch the original Rocky. It was written by Sylvester Stallone, and obviously he starred in it, and it was directed by John Avildsen. It came out in 1976. And I'm excited to talk about this movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like all of these movies, it has things that are kind of shocking for being from 1976. But then it finishes on such a high note that you forget anything that wasn't very good about the movie by the end. <laughs> Is that so? Yeah. Tell me more. Tell me more, Alex. Um, so at the end of the movie, I was super pumped. I was like, yes, Rocky's a badass. <laughs> he like did all these working out. He got a dog. He ran with his dog. He climbed up the stairs over and over again. He was just like jumping and happy. And... Then he has the big fight with Apollo, Apollo Creed. Creed? Apollo yeah. Creed. And uh, it, he goes 15 rounds, which was his goal. That was what he wanted to do, even though he didn't win. He wanted win, to go the distance. He wanted to go the distance. And so, like, you get to just watch him, like, watch them both go at it for so long and go the distance. And then the final shot is him telling Adrian that he loves her. And it finishes, and you're excited. <laughs> it makes you forget, like, that this is this really, really dumb jock dude who's like, Kind of creepy, <laughs> really creepy at times. Um, like, and uh, that he's just—he's such a—he's kind of a pathetic character. Maybe that's why you're really happy for him to like do so well at the end. But I think it just makes you forget who he was at the beginning of the movie more than anything. Yeah, I mean, the structure of this film is very interesting, very different. I mean, I wish I could go into a time machine to 1976 and watch this movie in 1976 without any like 2015 knowledge of life just to see how this character was received because I think that our perception of this character in 2015 is much more negative basically than it would be in 1976 <laughs> where we would just be like yeah he's a guy in 1976 baby and he's a pathetic guy in uh, 2015 um, but I don't know because he thought he refers to himself uh, as a bum quite a lot which by the way uh, we were inspired the new Rocky drinking game. I don't know, maybe this drinking game already exists, but if it doesn't, there needs to be a Rocky drinking game in which you take a shot every time the word bum is spoken by any character in the film. You will be completely sloshed by the 35 to 40 minute mark, I'm thinking. By the end of the movie, you might be going to the emergency room due yeah. to alcohol poisoning. Yeah. Um, it, won't, it won't last long. It won't be it a, a short game. game. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it, it's like, I'll just say, look, I think the end of the movie is great, but even that, I was thinking about it, I was like, even the boxing match is essentially mostly a montage. Like, they show the first round and part of, like, the second and third round, I think, then it's a montage until you get to, like, the 13th round, and then the 50th round, it's like, so even that, there's, like, no boxing in this boxing movie, which is really interesting because... Yeah, not until the end. Like, so many uh, uh, movies that are, like, franchises, my thought or when I think of when I think of Rocky, it turns out it's not this movie. Mm -hmm. It's like Rocky Three and Rocky Four. It's like because those movies, to my knowledge, to my memory, were more about boxing, had more boxing in them. Mm -hmm. um, this movie is really a character study about a character that I think in 2015 no one would actually want to spend two hours with. Like I think that's really the, like I think it's it says something about the audience and how the audience has changed. And I mean, you go to a theater back in the day, you had to in 1976 you needed to go to the movie theater to see a movie, basically. Okay, I mean there were ways to watch things at home but it was not widely spread as it is today and so you went to the theater you went what two three times a year and you would enjoy what you watch because you don't go to the movies a lot this movie is like a classic example of you are here for two hours but I feel like if I watched this movie and I never heard of it in 2015, I might have cut it off in the first hour. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I mean, so I know it's a classic or whatever, or, you know, Oscar nominated, but man, I think I seriously might have cut this movie off if it wasn't Rocky, you know? Yeah, Sylvester Sloan's, um, actually, I really like him as an actor after rewatching this movie. I mean, I've always liked Sylvester Sloan. I think that he's, he's himself, and that's cool. But he's in this himself. movie, seeing him just play this guy is, like, so believably, like, I don't know, half-witted, like, he's just, like, not all there, and, like, it's not even like he, like, has brain damage from boxing or something, it's just, like, he's not a smart He's just dude. not smart. And I think it's so funny how we have to, like, compare it to today, and, like, when he's, like, with Adrian, and he's, like, well, you're shy, and I'm dumb, so we're a good match, and in my mind, like, I don't, nobody would speak those words today, because nobody thinks that either of those things are inherently bad, 
Um, but it's really interesting to watch it and be like, oh, you're both like outcasts, so you're together. Um, whereas I don't get that, like this girl, like her parents told her you don't have a body, so you have to like develop your brain. So if that was the case, then she would not be interested in Sylvester Stallone at all. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know? what is it? With the thing, it was like, they said you have to develop her brain, but I, I didn't ever get that she developed her brain. Oh, no. She was I very. Mean, she doesn't come off as like. You know, like a smart person or anything, no, or exceptionally smarter than anyone else. But yeah, I mean, that, that's what I'm saying, like, <laughs> straight up. I almost feel like this is a story about special needs people fighting love. I mean, like, I'm not even trying to be funny, man. But it's just, it might be that, man. Adrian is suspect. And Rocky is, too. I'm just saying, man. And so, really, I think this is an underappreciated movie, you know. And I don't know if this movie has ever been heralded as that. But any organizations <laughs> that are about, you know, positive portrayals of uh, characters that have, you know, some sort of uh, disabilities or anything like that. I think Rocket should be uh, in that pantheon of that if it isn't. So if it isn't, we need to push him to get that up there because I think if nothing else, we can definitely spin it that way. I think I, you can definitely see some things there. So. I don't disagree with you. But I think there's way better films that <laughs> deliver that message than Rocky. Way better films? <laughs> Rocky is a classic film. It's a classic, but and I think it, that was not the message. These characters are Sylvester positively Stallone portrayed. wrote his character... As a dumb boxer dude, he didn't write his character as a person that had some sort of deficiency. Well, I think, no, you know? okay, look, this is what I'm trying to say. I believe that is actually the beauty of it, because it's not all, like, pointing out, like, hey, this guy, you know, has a uh, 80 uh, IQ or anything like that, or that there's something wrong with Adrian. It's just what it is. I just don't see how you can look at this movie and not see that there's something wrong with both of them. In 2015. <laughs> we might not have thought that in 1976. Exactly. I don't know what I'm talking about now. And, uh, Amazing yeah. what time does. The things. other thing is I have to, add, like, I have to wonder if there were women watching the scene where he takes Adrian to his house in 1976, or even when he's hitting on her and bothering her, if there were women like, oh, like, men, men suck so much. Like, so I'm watching this, and I'm just like, man, like, kick this guy out of the store. Like, what yeah, are you doing? Alone, why, are you, like, <laughs> why are you harassing this girl? Stop. Go home. Like, you're thinking of what to say in the pet shop the next day to bother this girl. And then, like, he gets her to his house, and she's, like, uncomfortable. And he's like, sit down, sit down, sit down. And I'm like, oh, all of this bothered me so much. And I just, I just wonder if women in 1976 were as put off by this yeah, interaction yeah. I as was, I was. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. Like, even that, I'm like, man. You know, I try, look, uh, I'm not a historian, but again, as you, the, the viewers know, I have a respect for history. Uh, this is very curious to me. I'm so removed from this that I'm just not sure. Like, I'm trying not to look at this with my 2015 eyes, but I'm just like, man, this is a, this is a rough situation right here. Like, I don't really know what to say about I'm just, again, I'm like, I can't see how this scenario at any time is okay. It's like, I don't see how anyone can look at this and not be like, this woman is basically being forced into sex in the scene mm -hmm. and being completely harassed by this dude. I mean, look, I understand that Rocky is like a nice guy, right? Like, they're not portraying yeah, he's him. He's not a bad guy. Yeah, they're not, not portraying him like he's yeah. a, a scumbag or something. But yeah. at the same time, man, it, it's just like, anyone creepy. pushing that hard and, and getting that yeah. kind of response, we just be like, all right, it's a wrap. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He's just like, no, no, I'm going for it. It's, yeah. it's like, okay. Determination. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, none of the characters in this, um, for as much as I, I do love the Rocky movies and the Rocky franchise, and, like, they do run together, but, um, watching this again, I realize, like, you don't really have any characters that you're rooting for except for him. Like, the rest of the characters are kind of annoying. They're kind of mean. <laughs> They're all mean to each other. And, and he's the only one. He's not particularly mean to anybody. You know, he's kind of quiet, stays back, and lets them all be mean to each other. Well, and mean um, to him. And mean to him. Degrees. Yeah, and mean to him to varying degrees. Um, for whatever reason, when I thought back to this movie, I thought that I liked the old man. But watching it again, I don't like the old man. <laughs> yeah, there's a little light about him. No, yeah, not he's a not single nice. thing. Again, I just think it's one of the situations where we're, we're mixing up the other movies. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, in later films, I think a, a, a lot of the characters end up coming off better than they mm -hmm. do in this one. I mean, I would say, again, including Rocky, I'm just like, when I think of. Rocky, I don't think of this character that I saw in this no, movie. You know what I'm saying? All, and, I, and I guess you could say, you know, the fight in this movie is what has changed him, you know, yeah. as a person That's or as a character point. going forward. But it's just like, yeah, that's, yeah, I don't think <laughs> that. Yeah. So, like I say, I think it's a cool example of just how, you know, franchises can evolve and, and, and things can shift so much. But it's always interesting to look at where something started and to think that this movie now basically has, I think, six entries. And I, if I'm not mistaken, a, a Creed might be considered the seventh film in this. Mm. So just the idea 
that this uh, franchise is going on for like 40 years yeah, almost. Yeah, it makes me want to go back and watch the other ones because this Rocky, I want to see if he transforms as a character because he can't get smarter. That's he can't it's not get like a, a thing that can happen for him. So I'm really <laughs> curious how he's portrayed because I don't remember this character as much. I remember him only as a boxer, Yeah. not yeah. his human being like struggling dude character. Yeah, and I was even thinking about one little side thing. You know, the famous scene where the music's playing and he's running in his sweatsuit. <laughs> Like, I totally forgot about the part where they show him running at first and he's, like, struggling. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's like, but it's still, like, even, I mean, it's so many things that are weird about this movie. Again, yeah, there are actual montages. Of it's like a training montage, but it's not a training montage. Like, they don't actually, in my opinion, I don't feel like they show him transition from being... I never have a clear understanding that he's completely out of shape or bad and then see him get into better shape or be better. Mm -hmm. Because the movie starts off with him fighting and he wins the fight. Right? Mm -hmm. And then it was asking him about this scar on his face, like he got mangled or something, like he had to get mm -hmm. plastic surgery. It, just, it was a little, you know, a few stitches. It's like, yeah, that's what happens when you're a boxer, right? I mean, you can't walk <laughs> out with your face messed up. I was really thrown off by that. And then it's like, oh, he can barely run all this. I'm like, the dude just had a fight, right? And he has five months to prepare. So he should have said, oh, five weeks, however long it is. He had enough time. He was already halfway in fighting shape, is what I'm saying. So I was really thrown off he by it. He really step up his game. Yeah, I was really, really thrown off by up. a lot of this stuff. I was just like, I think this movie was maybe the beginning of like the sports film formula, but it's obvious that at this point it hadn't quite perfected it. And so I think they, that's why they kept making them. They were iterating until they yeah. finally got it right. They finally got those training montages down. They finally got, you know, everything the way it needed to be. But it was a good start. <laughs> Not a bad start. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I, I really have to watch the rest of the Rockies because now watching this, I don't think it's my favorite one, but I have oh, to watch yeah. the rest of them to, to uh, be again, sure. Again, but yeah. I, this I, is... I can almost guarantee you this is not my favorite one because, frankly, I didn't walk out of this feeling very pumped on it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, again, it ended well. It ended on a very high note. It did what yep. you need to do. It, I mean, the last 20 minutes are pretty great. But the preceding hour and uh, change, hour and 40 minutes, a little suspect for me. So, mm -hmm. A little rough. So, yep. I don't know. Uh, is that it? So we got to say? Diversity. Talk about it's diversity. Good on diversity. Uh, yeah, for a movie in 1976, uh, and here's the thing, Apollo Creed is not a main character in this, you know, I mean, he's an important character for sure, but he's... He, he's a powerful character. Yeah, and he's his a powerful character. His character's displayed as, like, being very much in control of his world. Yeah, but you don't really get to learn a, a lot about mm -hmm. him, and he doesn't have any character moments, you know, he is just the villain, essentially, in this. And again, not necessarily a, a, a mustache twirling villain, but mm -hmm. the villain nevertheless. He's the thing that's going against our guy, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, but yes, I mean, I think a very positive portrayal in that regard. Even, I mean, him coming out and saying, stay in school and all that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I, I like the idea that they don't portray him as, like, some dude who has any drug problems mm -hmm. or any issues. Nothing wrong. I, yeah, yeah, he's like, he's a good boxer, and he's sending a good message, mm -hmm. and he wants to promote a good fight. So, like, he, yeah. he, he's a really good character in that regard. Um, <laughs> now, as far as the women in the movie, I mean, I think there are, like, two of them with speaking lines, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. We're counting the kid, the Rocky uh, Confront oh, on yeah. the street, and then Adrian. Yeah. And both of them are... Uh, mediocre <laughs> Definitely. Uh, at best <laughs> so yeah. I don't know I, again maybe the, maybe the portrayal of women improves maybe I don't know maybe Adrian becomes a stronger character after being with him as he grows in stardom maybe I have to see yeah oh <laughs> man there will be future uh, throwback Thursday videos to come I suppose <laughs> uh, yeah. alright well that's going to conclude our discussion of Rocky Again, I'm MJ. You can follow me on Twitter at the only MJ. She is. I'm Alex Storm. You can follow me at Alex Storm TMT, as in the Modern Truth. And themoderntruth.com is where you can find all of our Throwback Thursday videos, movie discussions, and all the news you need to know. Thanks for tuning in, folks. And again, have a happy Thanksgiving. Take care. <laughs>